the head of the NEA, National Education Association, one of these big teacher unions. This woman's name is Rebecca Pringle. She is a graduate of the University of Pittsburgh. That is the school, of course, that tried to shut me down and at which the libs tried to murder me uh, somewhat recently. Gives you a little uh, hint of her intellectual formation and academic background. The NEA president has this to say about the future of American education. I can hear Chief Seattle crying out to us, urging us to remember when you know who you are, when your mission is clear, and you burn with the inner fire of an unbreakable will. No cold can touch your heart. No deluge can dampen your purpose. And yea, you are those stars in the darkness. Your light will not be dimmed. Your purpose will drive you in a righteous fight for freedom because you know who you are. Now, I know that we have a number of viewers and listeners to this show in Central Europe, so I'll, I'll translate that speech. Ich bin ein bereichten, verstrusten, justen, blasten, ich bin ein der beichter, geister, reichten. I don't usually make that sort of a comparison, but if you were only listening to it, you just, you can't fully appreciate how this woman in some ways looks a little different uh, from a certain Austrian painter and 20th century political leader. Uh, but in other ways, she's got the short cropped hair. She's got in the hands and the passion. She even talks about the will, the will, will win out our wills. That, are you suggesting a phrase such as perhaps the triumph of the will, lady? Or are you, it just seems a little over the top. And this woman is a major leader of education in America. Perhaps the best advertisement for homeschooling I have ever seen as this woman falls into an occult ecstasy. Also, yeah, also kind of weird occult ideas. That the parallels between a certain historical phenomenon that I, I don't usually compare things to and these modern libs, especially in education, quite striking. And, and so you look at that and you say, goodness gracious, this woman is, has no control over herself. That's the point of education is to control yourself, is to be brought up, learn how to behave, learn how to discipline those, those lower passions and to bring them into accord with the rational will. And, and also to know things. To, this is, gets back to what we were talking to at the top of the show, that yes, we have deceit and corruption and vice and all this nasty stuff in our political order. But but one of the lesser discussed consequences of that is just sheer incompetence. And you see this expressed in our educational apparatus. The, the teachers and the administrators especially, broadly speaking, cannot teach things. They can't teach math. They can't teach reading. They can't teach basic life skills. They go off in these flights of fancy about whatever struggles <laughs> This lady has dealt with in her life, but but they can't they can't actually do the basic elements of the job, and you're seeing this everywhere right now. Go to ZipRecruiter.com/Knowles. If you are hiring, you're probably dealing with economic uncertainty by definition. Now more than ever, it is important to hire the right people faster and more efficiently to keep overall costs down. Thankfully, ZipRecruiter is a hiring partner that is focused on you and your needs, from pricing to technology. Everything that ZipRecruiter does is for you and what works best for you. Right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Knowles. ZipRecruiter's smart technology identifies the best matches for your job and lets you invite candidates that you really want to apply to your job before other businesses can snag them. I absolutely love how straightforward their pricing is. You know what you pay for before posting your job, so you can stick to your budget with no surprises. Hire the best with the help of a partner that is all about you with ZipRecruiter. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Knowles. That is ZipRecruiter.com slash Knowles. ZipRecruiter, 
the smartest way to hire. Right now, go to expressvpn.com slash Knowles. Profiling, surveillance, and data harvesting are a few things that you probably don't like very much about the tech giants. What can you actually do about it when you rely on so many of their products? Well, the good news is it doesn't take much for you to take a stand. For less than seven bucks per month, you can join me and fight back against big tech by using ExpressVPN. How do you think big tech companies make all their money anyway? Well, by tracking your searches, video history, and everything you click on, and then selling your personal data. ExpressVPN helps you anonymize much of your online presence by hiding your IP address, a unique identifier that every device has that allows big tech to match your activity back to you. That is why ExpressVPN is the only VPN that I use and trust on all of the devices to make it much more difficult for them to exploit my data for their own profits. And the best part is, it's so easy, even I can use it. I'm a bit of a Luddite. You just click one button on your phone, on your computer, on your tablet, turns it on, keeps people out of your business. Time to fight back. Go to expressvpn.com slash Knowles. Get three extra months for free. E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash Knowles. Expressvpn.com slash Knowles to learn more. Goodness gracious, there was a, a, a really pathetic story out of New York. New York City is paying $2 billion to black people. New York City specifically is paying $2 billion to black people who performed poorly on an old teaching exam. Hispanic people too. They wanted to become teachers and they took this exam and they failed and they sued and they said this exam is racist. And so they didn't, they didn't become teachers, a lot of them. New York City is going to pay $2 billion to them. Some people who never worked as a teacher will get more than $1 million each. They could even get pensions as a result of this, which will inflate the cost beyond the $1.8 billion that the Post is reporting. 64-year-old Herman Grimm will be paid $2,055,383 after failing this test a lot because supposedly the test was racist. This guy, Herman Grimm, was asked, how is the test racist? He couldn't say. He has no examples. He failed the test a lot. He's probably not good at coming up with answers here, but he is pretty good at making two million bucks. And you want to know the cherry on top of this story? They remade the test. It's no longer racist. The test now, totally woke, liberal, politically correct, progressive, racism-free. The scores didn't improve. The, the, the black people performed poorly on that exam too. Why is that? I don't know why. You'll have, hear some people say, oh, it's because black people are terrible. You might hear some people say, well, it's because they, the, the people who took this test, they didn't have a good educational background. And they might say, well, they didn't have a good social background, and so they just didn't have the ability to prepare for this test in the same way that other people did. I don't know. I don't know why the, the black and Hispanic test takers didn't do as well on the old test and the new test. I don't know. It's not my particular subject area of interest. I leave it to other people to, to figure it out. Here's the one thing I do know. It, it wasn't because the old test was racist. We've now proven that because of the new test. And yet, $2 billion from New York City taxpayers still going to these people, which is a reminder that we talk a lot about reparations. This is the new radical liberal proposal, is to resurrect the idea of reparations for slavery centuries after the fact. But we have reparations. This is a type of reparations. This is a, a, an expression of how in the United States, if you can claim that something is racist, you can get whatever you want. This is why this kind of language is bandied about. This is why it's the worst thing that you can possibly be called in modern America is to be called a racist. It's why people throw it around totally baselessly. I remember uh, David Webb, the black conservative commentator. He was hosting a radio show. This is some years ago now. And a woman called in. They were debating an issue. He was winning the debate. And she said, well, you only think that because of your white privilege. It was a radio interview. It was a phone or so. She didn't, she didn't know. And David Webb, he says, you know, I'm pretty sure it's not. And I don't think he would say that if we were on TV right now. And he totally got her. But she didn't care. She just, she just wanted some excuse. Just like these people. And I guess good on them. These people who just got paid $2 billion over nothing. I guess good on them because they gamed the system. But 
That kind of a system is not going to be able to persist forever, in part because it encourages selfishness and pride and greed and vice and corruption among the people, but also in part because we can't do the basic stuff that a society is supposed to do because we've, we're lowering standards needlessly because we can't teach, we can't adjudicate teachers, we can't run the government, we can't conduct investigations, we can't get the economy to work, we can't conduct foreign policy, we just can't do stuff. We can't reason about these things. I, I keep going back to this Andrew Tate example the fact that our moral discourse on the right and the left has, has boiled down to this significant but ultimately relatively small question of, hey, do people consent? Do those girls consent to be pimped out by Andrew Tate? Well, then it's, it's totally fine. Hey, did, do people consent to all sorts of weird sex stuff in America, including children? Oh, then it's totally fine. Isn't there something a little bit deeper. We used to have moral discourse. We used to have the ability to reason about these things. As that ebbs away, so ebbs away our civilization. We'll cease to be civilized. We'll become barbarous materialists howling into the wind. Boy, what a great clip that was. Now make sure you subscribe, ring that bell. Don't miss a single video here on the Michael Knowles YouTube channel.